Hello and welcome back to my channel! Today we're doing something that's been highly requested, and honestly I'd probably do even if it wasn't because I love this sort of thing. We're doing Middle Earth. I think everyone should be familiar with Middle Earth. Everyone should have seen the Lord of the Rings movies because they are some of the best movies ever made, based on some of the best books ever written, and I'm passionate about it, so it, maybe it's not for everyone, but this is Middle Earth. Now what I've done here is roughly placed enough kingdoms to make this interesting. Not every kingdom is gonna be here. I could be petty, and actually, you know, I might put Rivendell in here, actually. I think that's a big one. Let's put just a few people here for Rivendell. Some elves. There we go. We're gonna let them do their thing. We're gonna see who does what. Now, me being kind of a stickler for this sort of thing and knowing the lore behind the world, I know that this doesn't really make any sense because timeline-wise, some of these things wouldn't exist at the same times. So the timeline's kinda all over the place. So just know that I know that, I guess. This is all just for fun. It's not gonna be a reenactment of the films or anything. Gondor down here. Minas Tirith. Minas Tirith. Mordor. Mordor. Angmar for like the Witch King. Mirkwood along with Lorien. And I'm planning on, once we get rolling, this would be Fangorn right here. The forest of the Ents, the trees that are alive. We've got this, which I, I don't know if I've ever used this, but I think we can technically make the trees come to life. We're not going to do that right away, because I don't know what that's going to do for us. And then for the Shire, we're going to do dwarves because they're tiny, but then we're going to make them even tinier and just pretend that they're hobbits. So that's what I've got. Let's get this show on the road. Let me just pause and think about it for a second and make sure I'm not missing anything. I know I could put Isengard down here. You know, let's actually do that. Let's put Isengard down here. Okay. <laughs> Isengard. So this will probably be a long video. I know these big map videos tend to be kind of a nightmare towards the end because the maps are so big and it's really hard to decide a winner. If you haven't seen the movies, 10 of 10, highly recommend. If you're more of a reader, the books are also fantastic. And uh, yeah, there's like a Lord of the Rings show coming out later this year that I'm like, my expectations are very, very low, but part of me still has hope that maybe it'll be okay, but I just don't like what they've showed so far. Oh no, Lorien moved into Fangorn Forest. <laughs> All right, let's make some trees alive. Yeah. I don't know if they do anything other than just move around, but hey, it's for accuracy. Oh no, they actually do attack. Now Rohan is at war with the Ents. That makes no sense. But hey, maybe they'll work their way down to Isengard and we'll have a little accurate reenactment. Rivendell is nicely kind of keeping to their little area up here because Rivendell is obviously just like one small waterfall city. If they never get involved, I'll be cool with that. Angmar's moving up into the hills here. Erebor's doing the same thing. Erebor, stronghold of Thrall, king under the mountain. I thought about putting more dwarves up here for the Iron Hills. I figured Erebor kind of covers the area. Rohan getting wrecked right now by trees. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I like that it works though because the elves and the trees are naturally at peace because of the elves' perk that they're peaceful with wildlife. And I guess the trees are considered wildlife, so the trees and the elves get along. But Rohan and the trees, not so much. Okay, I want to see some conflict here. Mordor's growing stronger every moment. Against the power of Mordor, there can be no victory. 300 population, I think that they're in the lead. Oh, Mirkwood. Yeah, Mirkwood's gonna slay out. I always thought Mirkwood should slay out because they've got such a huge amount of land. Like this is, you know, this is obviously a fairly accurate map for the most part. Mirkwood is huge as far as the Mirkwood forest goes. And since they've got Lorien right next door, like the elves should be uh, such a terrifying force, but they kind of keep to themselves. But in this game, they're pretty aggressive. So I'm curious to see what they would do if they were more aggressive. The Shire as well, obviously, they're not aggressive whatsoever. They pretty much pretend that there is no conflict in the world, or they just don't want to even hear about it. They don't want to get involved. Those are the problems of big people. Isengard spreading. Lorien's doing pretty well. All the humans aren't doing amazing. Minas Tirith is doing quite well, actually. I'm putting like a bridge right here. We're going to pretend it's Osgiliath. There has to be a pathway to get across, right? Because I know they're not going to be building docks on this river, which means they're going to build docks way down here eventually, and that'll be for a while. So let's just open it up. Okay. Isengard doing well. Mirkwood 460. Mordor 480 though. And they moved into the uh, lowlands over here. I think Harad is down here where the Haradrim come from. This is my 100k face reveal except it's just nerd reveal. <laughs> 100k nerd reveal. Isengard has declared war on Rohan. 
that's appropriate. Rohan's gonna get wiped out, I'm pretty sure, first, probably, because they're kind of center. It will begin in the Rohan. Moria kind of keep into themselves. Oh, Rohan was destroyed just in that second I looked away. Oh, what the heck? Where was Gondor when the Westfold fell? They were responsible. Shire's out here whooping up on Angmar. Who would have thought? Oh, look at this. Lorien and Minas Tirith getting along. We got Mordor working their way closer and closer to Minas Tirith. The board is set and the pieces are already in motion. Are these elves? Yeah, Lorien's out here. Lorien's actually kind of going in. This is like the battle that happens at the beginning of the movie, although that would have been up here. Okay, Gondor's looking strong, looking beefy. This is Erebor, I think. They're all just traveling casually through Mordor. This is such an ancient meme, but I feel like I have to say it, and that is... One does not simply walk into Mordor. How's it going out here? There's a lot of movement by everyone. I'm actually pretty impressed by that. Moria's still chilling. It would actually make a lot of sense if they got wiped out, because that's what happens. Spoilers. Uh, Rivendell kind of keeping to themselves, although they have traveled through the mountains. There's Well, there's like one guy. They haven't built anything over here. They just own the land, I guess. Mirkwood, barely ahead of Mordor, just by a teensy bit. And then Angmar is actually ahead of both of them. You know, I wish I thought of this earlier, but I could technically make all of the good races ally, and then all of the bad ones declare war on all the good ones, and then I could turn diplomacy off. So I choose to do that. All right. Angmar is actually like... Looking pretty tough. I think that'll be a threat for everyone. It's weird that the elves and dwarves are just passing through and Mordor's kind of just like watching. Let's actually make sure we put some more wood because I think that the map, I should have checked this probably earlier. The map didn't really have a lot of wood on it. Let's do this really quick. Just give everyone a little more wood because the map was kind of sparse on wood. I think that's the reason why expanding is a little slow because everyone's kind of on low level everything. But I do want them to fight over resources as well. Like someone should be taking this. Look at this lovely forest. It's like not really desirable land. So I was expecting Mordor to mostly be on the offensive, but I don't know, the elves and dwarves are pretty interested in this land for whatever reason. Hey, makes it good. At least someone's fighting someone. So far, Rohan is the only kingdom to get eliminated, which is kind of a bummer because I like them. I'm surprised the Shire's doing so well. Yeah, Mordor is going to be a pain because they have all this land and it's going to be a long time before anyone up here pushes all the way down here to stop them. So they're going to have a lot of time to build up their forces, which honestly is accurate. They're kind of left alone in the lands that no one wants to go to anyway. If no one checks on them, they might not even know how strong Mordor has actually gotten. Oh, what's going on up here? It looks like, it's like Angmar is actually doing some damage up here to the dwarves, to Erebor. The Shire is spreading like crazy. Oh, Angmar is now attacking Moria. Moria is going to be a tough cookie to crack. Good luck with that, boys. Look at this. Isengard's under attack. Okay, just for accuracy's sake, let's just make these few trees alive. Can we please? It's all for fun. You got to have a couple trees attack. There we go. They kill him already. Alternate history. The Ents march on Isengard and get immediately wiped out. And it's such a sad story. And I cried. Gondor up to a thousand. They've pretty much taken this entire area. Good for them. Minas Tirith holding their ground. Good for them. Mirkwood. I think they're going to keep spreading into this whole area out here. Angmar is like a virus on the world. Oh, look at this. They're attacking the Shire. They're still attacking Moria. And then who knows? Oh, yeah. Look at this. They're attacking Rivendell as well. Not very much, but they are. I think long term, they'll wipe out Moria and Rivendell. I think they'll struggle with Shire for a long time, but I think they'll eventually wipe out the Shire. Unless Erebor gets busy and starts attacking their back line here. I would love to see Mirkwood also get involved, but they're kind of they're kind of more at odds with Mordor. Very cool. Moria will fall. Just pretend these are goblins right now. Goblins are attacking Moria. We got Isengard coming through here and beating up the Shire. The little hobbits doing their best. Surprised that they would bother with that. They've got much more pressing threats. They got Minas Tirith all the way over here. Very nice. Yeah, the Isengard, I'm surprised they're doing as well as they are because they're literally surrounded on all fronts by people that don't like them very much. Angmar is doing so well because they're not really surrounded. They kind of have their own corner. Look at them. They're all the way out here. Goodness. 1300, 1300. Okay, well, hey, Angmar is actually not in the lead anymore, so that's something. They've been in so much conflict, so it makes sense. Mordor is currently in the lead, followed by Mirkwood, followed by Gondor, and then followed by Angmar. Moria is down to seven population. It's very fitting that they're the next one to get wiped out. I mean, they should have been first probably, but there's just a few stragglers up here. Look at this. Isengard is burning. 
We should have put a uh, tower in the middle here. I mean, it, it wouldn't have been fair because it's really strong, but for looks, did I put a volcano down here? Okay, well, that's close enough. It's not a real volcano. You know what? No, let's make a real volcano. It looks more accurate like this, but there we go. There's Mount Doom. Okay, Moria, they think this might be it for them. There's a few dwarves hiding in the mines. Did they even make any mines? No, kind of ironic. There's the last one. Stop them. Oh. Here we go, Mordor pushing in big time. When the shadow of Mordor reaches this city, it will begin. Man, it's too bad we can't place down, like, giant elephants. If there were elephants in the game, I could place them and then give them the titan trait so they're huge. But, uh, no elephants. Honestly, elephants would make a lot of sense to have in this game, especially since they added the savannah biome. I would have rathered elephants than rhinos, but maybe they'll add elephants eventually. Or in this case, olifants. Cool, I'm glad that that war is like very accurately taking place. They're like fighting in Osgiliath right here. Um, Rivendell is getting pretty weakened. That's to be expected. I am now regretting my decision to do such a big map. We got Isengard out here. Wait a minute, this is... Oh yeah, they look yellow, but they're green, aren't they? Huh? Oh, this is... Oh, I must have clicked on a... That's so funny. I clicked on an Isengard one. This is Angmar right here. They're helping out their buddies. Fight off the elf incursion here. Cute. Evil helps evil, you know? How sweet. We got the Shire not looking too good. They're down to 450. And they're kind of being attacked from both directions by both Isengard and Angmar. And they're being pushed back a lot. Their main village, the actual Shire itself, has thus far remained untouched. The hobbits, they live in peace, farming, hanging out by the river, and being peaceful, loving folk. Meanwhile, you know, danger closes in on them. Dang, Minas Tirith is dropping in population quite a bit here. Mordor is just sending everything they've got right now over and over again. As they do, they're very strong. 2,000. Whoa. We look away from their population for a few minutes and they, like, boost up a ton. I guess Mirkwood's been busy. Because their population's kind of struggling. Erebor is doing very well, though. I'm happy that one of the dwarf kingdoms is actually being proactive. They're in second place by just a teensy bit here. Isengard, for having so much opposition, is actually holding their ground really well. That's kind of the nature of the orcs in this game, that they're pretty good, even with less numbers. Minas Tirith, I think, will eventually fall. In fact, it's falling, since the city would actually be right here. The actual city of Minas Tirith has now fallen. Hopefully Gondor will get involved pretty soon here, because they're kind of just chilling. They've wasted a lot of time with Isengard, but also not that much. Like, they're not being very aggressive to anyone. I love this, man. This army does not need to be here, but they are, and they're just hanging out. They're just guarding. What a bunch of homies. Shire down to 300 population. Angmar up to almost 1,800. Rivendell hanging in there. I don't know for how long, but they're hanging in there. We've got Mirkwood doing well, but their population has been on a slow decline for a little while here. Mostly just because of their armies being sent out. They're not really under attack, I don't think. And then Erebor has got their nice little safe corner up here. They got a little bit of conflict out here in the mountains, but nothing too crazy. They got all the time in the world to keep building up their armies. Minas Tirith, still under siege by Mordor. Surprised this village is fine. <laughs> I don't know why no one's bothered with them. And then Gondor down here kind of just like, don't mind us, just don't even look at us. Wonder if anyone will take this island. All right, I think we should fast forward a teensy bit here. Otherwise, this video is going to be way too long. So let's go ahead and get things moving. And we'll check back in a minute once anything significant happens. All right, we're back. Nothing too crazy has happened. Angmar has pretty much boxed the Shire in. The Shire's actually been holding their ground pretty well. Their population stayed steady about 600. Angmar's gotten really strong. Rivendell's really only alive because it's just a big pain for people to travel through the mountains. No one's really cared enough to actually go over there to finish them off, but Mirkwood, almost 5,000 population. Mordor hanging out around 4,000. Isengard still doing really well, thanks to Angmar. Angmar has been in here helping them defend their lands this whole time. Like, this is Angmar defending them. So, 
they got buddies, and their buddies are keeping them safe. Gondor's been pretty underwhelming. They haven't done a whole lot. They've been kind of passing through this land. Not really been too helpful defending Minas Tirith. They've just been kind of near it. The game feels like slow motion on one time speed. It's not even like it's lagging right now. This is how slow it feels to do normal speed because we're so used to fast forwarding everything. That's so slow. The elves have been very aggressive on the front lines here. As you can see, very, very aggressive. But they haven't pushed all the way in yet. They've pretty much been hanging out out here. They haven't actually got into the thick of it in Mordor. They've kind of been hanging out in the plains. Eventually, they'll make their way down there. Erebor's population took a huge dip. They were down to like 800 at some point. And weirdly enough, I couldn't really pinpoint what... But yeah, no one's been wiped out during that whole period of time. No one's really been weakened that much. So we'll probably go back to fast forwarding. So far, pretty cool. No one's been eliminated since Moria. And obviously, Rohan got eliminated at the beginning because bad location. And, you know, the trees went after them, which was mostly for the memes. Let's get back to it. Alright, we're back. Still not a whole lot going on. I'm gonna say, as it tends to go with these giant maps, everything's very slow. But we're seeing movement. Mordor's still under pretty constant attack. It's just kind of on the edges, not really in the front lines. It's almost like Mordor has decided to just move on from Minas Tirith. They kind of wiped out this top area. And they've really been gunning after the Lorien Elves. You can see they came all the way up here, all the way from down here. So I think they have something against them. And they actually could pull it off because they have Isengard and Angmar kind of doing the same thing. Although they're mostly just sitting on the sidelines. Even though Lorien is surrounded by allies, they're kind of more surrounded by enemies. Because the allies are kind of being really passive but their enemies are being very aggressive. So Lorien's future doesn't look great. The Shires made sort of a comeback on population, mostly because Angmar's kind of left them alone. Erebor, same thing, sort of a population comeback. Rivendell, just chilling. No one's bothering them and they're not bothering anyone else. Mordor has taken over this area a lot. They just own this whole desert area quite a bit. In fact, I think it's time to replenish trees. Even though they do come back automatically, I know that they don't really come back fast enough. And I think that it helps things along if people actually have access to wood. Because they can't really do much without wood. A little extra trees for you guys. I know in the desert you're not going to get much. But uh, that's your fault for setting up camp there, you idiots. Okay, goodness gracious, we got some movement here. Rivendell got wiped out finally. They had gotten them down to like one population and that one population stayed there for like a long time. It was kind of funny. One guy was hiding somewhere. Uh, Minas Tirith was wiped out down here. They're still in it. They're still up here, but they've been so aggressive in this area. Uh, a combination of, I think, Angmar and Mordor. Isengard's not really been a part of it, they've mostly just been watching, but uh, Lorien is pretty much gone. There's a few people up here as well. Everyone that's been being wiped out is all of the good races. The Shire over here is still in hot water, they're still getting attacked quite a bit on the front lines, although they're holding their ground just fine. Isengard and Gondor, you'd think there'd be more action going on here, but Gondor's just kind of like sitting by. They've helped out a little bit out here, but not that much. There's been a little bit of fighting kind of on the edges of Mordor, and the elves have been very active in being here, but not really fighting them. It's like they're satisfied just holding this area and that's it. They've got a little bit going on back here, but again, nothing very much. No one's really been aggressive towards Mordor or Angmar. It's just the two of them being aggressive to everyone else. And Isengard is kind of just here. So if anything can happen, everyone still has lots of population. Mordor, Mirkwood still has the most by over a thousand. So like, they're not in trouble. But I'm definitely seeing a trend here of the orcs just being a lot more aggressive. There's another chunk of the Shire destroyed. They're getting kind of pushed back to the coast here. And I think we're going to see Lorien disappear in a moment as well. Rest in peace to you. And then Minas Tirith as well. Hanging in there, but they're not even close to their homelands now. Mordor has pretty much taken over that whole area. Back to it. Okay, we had a lot happen on that one. 
exciting stuff. More kind of bad news if you're rooting for the uh, forces of good. Minas Tirith officially wiped out. This train here kind of still going. I don't know what they're doing. They're just coming down here, hanging out by the volcano, and then going back. Sometimes they'll cross through and fight over here a little bit, but not much. We've got Mordor and Isengard still out here. Not really bothering Gondor that much, but they did do a little bit. Ooh, I just noticed this. They did do some stuff down here, so they're starting to get aggressive towards Gondor. The Shire is on its like last legs here. Uh, Angmar has been all over it, although this is going to be a weird to reach spot, probably. I think that's all that's left, but based on how the armies tend to behave, something tells me they're not going to go down here for whatever reason, so maybe the Shire will survive. I don't know. For the most part, they're pretty much gone. Mirkwood is still killing it. 7,000 population. I think if the forces of good have a chance, it's going to be Mirkwood that saves them. They have all these armies roaming around out here, but none of them are being pushed towards Mordor. Although they've been getting further and further. They did this earlier, and they've been down this far on this side. So for whatever reason, they don't want to cross this gap here. They are only coming from this side. So maybe they'll keep pushing in. That would be cool, but they've got a lot of ground to cover, I think. So yeah, good luck with that. Okay, that was a lot. It's been another couple hundred years. Gondor has been getting whooped up on. They're down to 180 population. And I think it's not gonna be much longer for them because Mordor and Angmar are kind of all over them right now. So it's only a matter of time for them. Kind of sad. Mirkwood still owns obnoxiously big part of the map, almost 8,000 population. And thank goodness, finally, them and the dwarves have actually been working their way deeper and deeper into Mordor. They still have a stupid amount of land to cover, but they have a stupid amount of land, so it should all work out. Erebor mostly staying out of the conflict. They still have been sending these kind of strings of armies down to help out in Mordor. And then they've also been pretty aggressive over here on the front of Angmar, although they have been defending pretty aggressively because now that they're not so busy with the Shire or Lorien, they've been spending most of their time just defending Although they do have some armies down here in Gondor. So yeah, I mean, it's trucking along. It's still kind of a concerning amount that has to happen between now and someone winning. I think the forces of evil are looking still pretty strong. So once Gondor is gone, they kind of own a really large part of the map to the point where they could just all work together and push into Mirkwood. And then once they take Mirkwood out, I don't think Erebor is much of a chance, but Mirkwood and Erebor have been working together to take out Mordor, so I don't know. Maybe they do have a chance. So we'll see what happens. But for the most part, there's the wars are pretty slow, and uh, so yeah, back to it, and we'll try to get some results here. All right, Gondor has been officially wiped out. Rest in peace, although they've got a bunch of boats out here, huh? Eh? What's going on here? I guess the kingdom is still going. So sad, but it was bound to happen. They didn't, they weren't really aggressive. They kind of used this mountain range to defend themselves, but then didn't ever do much beyond it. They just kind of like stayed in their little safe edge here. And honestly, that's kind of pretty spot on for Gondor itself, you know? They just kind of live their own zone and protect their own kingdom without really helping out until, you know, they have to. So that kind of works out. Isengard still going strong. No one's really bothering them now. They're pretty much safe. Mirkwood's been busy with Mordor, so Isengard's pretty much undisturbed at this point. No one's really at war with Isengard, so... That's cool. Mirkwood's population has been taking some pretty heavy dips here. Was at 7,000 not too long ago. Now they're dropping into 5,000. So it's starting to look kind of bad for them, honestly. Erebor's population stayed pretty steady, but they have not grown at all. They're kind of trapped in here by their allies. They don't really have any land they can expand to without fighting for it. And the land that they have gained from fighting isn't really desirable. Like this land isn't that nice. And then, like, they've taken some of this up here, but, like, this land isn't that nice either. So, I don't know what's gonna happen next. I'm hoping that the elves can kind of turn it around. They're being aggressive, but they don't really have the population they need to do this. I'm a little worried for the good guys. Oh, you can see another area just dropped somehow. 
the world it looks just so war torn you can see all the areas like pretty much every inch of the map has had some sort of battle there this has been fun to watch it's been fun to kind of imagine what's going on on the ground for all these battles you know knowing the the world and the lore you know it's kind of like a fun alternate history so hopefully you guys have been enjoying this but i'm determined to let this go until we have an actual winner whether it be good or evil. Even if I gotta record for another three hours and fast forward all of it and cut it all down for you guys, I'm down for that. So let's get a winner here. We've had very, very aggressive orcs. Mordor has been not giving them a break. Look at this. They're traveling all the way across all these plains to get there. It's mostly been Mordor. I think Angmar's mostly been on defense. Erebor's actually pushed back quite a bit over here, but they just got these stupidly big armies. And look at how much adamantine stuff they have. They're just ready for anything. So they're crossing this whole tundra over here. And now they're pushing back in kind of the back line of Erebor. Look at how much they've destroyed already. Their population's diving hard. And then Mirkwood is scattered into like four sections now. So Mirkwood's pretty much done for at this point. They've been almost entirely pushed out of their main area. I, even Isengard's up here trying to attack them. It's pretty much just a matter of time now. I think, unfortunately for us good people, I think evil may prevail today. They were just way more aggressive. We had Minas Tirith who really didn't do very much. Gondor who didn't really do very much. Lorien was pretty active, but then eventually got killed off because they were kind of in the middle. Moria and Rivendell, we didn't expect them to do much because they were kind of sandwiched in there. Shire did fine, but they were pretty much just on defense the whole time. Everyone just kind of got pushed around by all these different kingdoms, except for these two. But their time has finally come. All right, well, let's watch the sad ending here, huh? All right, well, let's watch how this thing plays out. This is it. Look at them go, dude. Wow. Okay, wait. Erebor down to the last bit here. Mirkwood down to the last bit as well. The forces of evil <laughs> triumph today. I mean, to be fair, that actually makes a lot of sense in the sense of the Lord of the Rings world because evil was kind of overpowered, but they defeated it by throwing the ring into this place and therefore you know, blowing up everything and kind of consuming evil once and for all. Uh, but if they weren't able to do that and they had to just do a sheer numbers battle, honestly, Mordor was able to just send like tens of thousands of troops and it like not really matter. So I guess we should have seen that coming, huh? There it is. Mirkwood, not officially destroyed, but they're not on the map anymore. Erebor down to the final seven. Well, there's no one over here in this corner, so maybe they'll just live forever. Here we go. Finish it. Finish the job. Come on, keep going. You're almost there. Finish the job. There we go. Well, I would say the MVPs were kind of the Mirkwood Elves. I think they obviously did really well because of their land. They just had a stupid amount of land um, and good land at that. Um, Erebor obviously did really well. The best two were obviously the final two. But some honorable mentions would probably be Minas Tirith. Ah, Lorien probably was the other MVP. They got screwed on location. But they really did a lot of good work against Isengard and Mordor. Remember when they were all attacking the front lines of Mordor out here? They were a small little uh, kingdom, kind of shoved in the middle, and they were taking on two kingdoms at the beginning. All right, Erebor's gone. It's official. Evil triumphs over good. I don't know what the lesson is here. Evil worked together to defeat good. So, you know, I guess the, the takeaway is work together, you know? Work together, hopefully, for good. Teamwork really is the best way to get things done. So, anyway, let's see, how long did I film? Three hours of filming to get this result. Gonna be sort of an obnoxious video to edit, but hopefully you guys enjoy it. We hit 100k, I think, a week or two ago. They're sending me my silver play buttons. Maybe I'll show that off when I get it. And a big thank you to everyone for watching this video, for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.